Hi everyone, and this week's Facebook page um, session, we're going to talk about B12. And one of the hardest things that people really try and work out themselves is what is the best B12 for them. So we're really going to get stuck into it this week. So as you may or may not know, there is, like folate, there's an umbrella term B12, and we have various forms of B12 under that umbrella. Cyanocobalamin you can think of as the folic acid of your B12s. So really it's not the best form, it's synthetic, it's man-made and it's not an active form. We then have hydroxocobalamin. Now hydroxocobalamin is essential for folate metabolism. It is the step removed or the step prior to our active B12s. It's good for people who don't cope with metals particularly well, and perhaps there is a bit of research to suggest that those who have elevated nitric oxide levels, this could be uh, definitely the best form to use. Then we have our two actives. We have methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. So think of methylcobalamin as our neurological B B12. It helps brain function, it protects against NMDA glutamate receptors. It's fantastic for those people, particularly with MTR, MTRR, FOOT2 and TCN genes. And then we have adenosylcobalamin. So adenosylcobalamin, think of that as your mitochondrial B12. It helps the energy cycle and it also is a cofactor for the MUT gene. So particularly for those people with MMAB and MUT genes, this is the one that we would prefer to use. And of course, you can use a combination of the two. The next step we have to look at is, you know, who's at risk? Because there's a lot of you who are at risk for B12. And if you're interested in looking at my B12 webinar that I did a couple of years ago, it really highlights the fact that our reference ranges here in Australia are not particularly good. They're, I think they're too low. And I think definitely vegetarians and vegans, irrespective of any genetic polymorphisms, are very much at risk and they must be supplementing. People over 60 years of age, because B12 metabolism is all about gut function, we need to have good amounts of hydrochloric acid because we get it from our meat protein. Forget about vegetables, they don't supply enough B12. And people over 60 particularly are at risk because they do have a reduction in hydrochloric acid. Anyone that has gut function issues, those that have had gastric surgery, that is a big problem. And particularly, we have hundreds of thousands of people around the world on proton pump inhibitors or antacids, and that definitely affects our B12 levels because basically what it's doing is wiping out your hydrochloric acid. Anyone who's used nitrous oxide, because that will completely suck up the B12, and therefore we have a problem using the folate. MTR and MTRR are big issues there. People with eating disorders, gastrointestinal disorders, and of course babies who are born um, or and breastfeed uh, to mums who have a B12 deficiency. So the signs and symptoms that you really want to be looking out for with a B12 deficiency are any pins and needles, any weakness, any issues trying to walk in a straight line, numbness, tingling, confusion, depression, uh, high homocysteine, low methionine, chronic fatigue, infertility, low platelets. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Um, we've got, you know, irritability. Uh, in some instances, we can get really weak in our limbs or tremors, even symptoms mimicking Parkinson's disease, spasticity of muscles, problems with eye function, palpitations, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And almost every person that we, I see in clinic has a B12 deficiency because when you look at the reference ranges, the US reference range says 200 to 900 picograms per milliliter, or that equates to 150 to 650 picomoles per liter. In Australia, our reference ranges are pretty much the same. And in, I've seen some labs saying, you know, 125 picomoles per litre is the minimum 
and 500 is the maximum. And I can tell you that if you have got B12 levels of 125 picomoles per litre, you have a B12 deficiency. The Japanese reference ranges a few years ago, they changed it and they basically said the minimum is 500 um, picograms per milliliter and they their reference ranges go up to 1300 so I think here in Australia we definitely have issues around b12 and doctors just not picking up b12 deficiency soon enough soon enough so I'm going to put a handout together for you um, like we did last week which is a PDF which talks about the specific genes and which b12 is more um, more suitable for those people with um, various genetic deficiencies. So make sure you look out for the PDF. Make sure you join me this week because we have lots of questions from everybody and um, we'll be going through some of the products that um, are best for you. So I look forward to seeing you this week and make sure you pop in all the questions in advance. Thanks and see you soon. Bye for now.